Hey there, it's Perry. Welcome back. And yes, it's been a long time since I've put a video out um, on YouTube. I got a notification the other day with a question about the progress with the tank. And I've got to say that, you know, 2021, particularly towards the latter part of the year, um, I, I had some real tough personal issues going on in life. And as a result, I did lose uh, that tank to and it did crash and I just didn't care because uh, the things that were happening in life were far more important um, you know than uh, the tank at that point but I got uh, reinvigorated to try to you know reboot the tank in January and I did and I kicked it off with a nice 17 piece battle corals order from um, Adam over at battle corals and I got some really nice pieces in uh, very chunky healthy well packed and it really got the tank going, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I've went without sand on this tank because my passion is really for keeping SPS corals, particularly acros. Um, and that being said, it's just this is the best setup for me uh, for the maintenance I care to do and everything else. Um, I decided to, to discontinue the use of any type of products. Um, about two weeks ago and ironically the tank is looking the cleanest coralline starting to boom uh, so i've moved away from any type of bacteria and carbon source dosing uh, to just back to skimming more of a berlin method i do have a little bit of ciparax passive in the sump as well as carbon uh, passive in the sump but other than that it's just heavy flow heavy feeding uh, and heavy skimming and literally since i've done that uh, the tank has balanced itself and I'm seeing some really nice results as far as the rock work goes. Uh, the color of the corals were always doing good since the reboot. And like I said, that was early January this year. But I just kept seeing all the like dino strands popping up randomly, cyano popping up randomly. And I do have some issues with hair algae in the tank. But uh, you can see the fox faces constantly on the grays. And it should be all gone in short order. Um, so yeah, so I'm just letting the tank kind of do its thing. I'm using Red Sea uh, salt, I'm keeping my parameters uh, pretty low, like NSW values, about a 7.3 dKH. Uh, as far as pH goes, I peak at like 8.1, which I find to be respective to the alkali run. So I'm not really all concerned about trying to be a pH, re uh, pH chaser. Uh, in fact, I'm just trying to get back to the good old basics of reef keeping and just letting the tank and letting the fish and the corals do their thing. And since I've started doing that, as I said before, uh, things are really starting to move along. Uh, as far as lighting goes, I was using the Kessel and honestly the shimmer and the brightness of it just was absolutely disturbing to my eyes. So I ended up going back to T5s and uh, of course it's getting summertime in Florida and heat was definitely becoming an issue. So I decided to buy this Reef Breeders um, V32 Photon and it's in the front part of the tank. So it kind of comes to the this tier as you can see right here. This zone is really well lit by that. And then in the back, I have another 180 watt SB Reef Roland V22 uh, it's a little bit shorter of the unit, but it's more designed for the back portion of the tank so that I have even light distribution and there's just not a, a place in the tank that's not getting illuminated. And as you can see, it covers that part of the reef. So that being said, I have it locked in around 80% blue and 25% white, whereas the uh, reef breeders, because it's having to go down further in the tank, I'm having it around 90% on all the blue channels and 28% on the white and I think 20 green and 10 red. So I keep those a little bit lower. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have a protein skimmer, a return pump, several pumps in the tank. Uh, you can see in the back, that's a Tunzi, I think a 6095 in the back, blowing straight into that wall. Same thing with the MP40. And then, and then I have those two other power heads that put out like 5,000 gallons per hour. They're incredibly strong. They're J-Bows, but I really like the amount of water they move. So nothing really settles in the tank. 
it all goes over the overflow and into the sump and that's a mesh filter sock for collecting uh, it does let small debris through but whatever I only change it once a week and um, rinse it out or whatever and then swap it back in uh, literally do nothing else so as you can see the tank is uh, quite basic um, uh, I, I like to show that you don't need you know uh, three or four thousand dollars in lighting for an aquarium like this which by the way is 36 inches long by 24 inches um, deep as well as 24 inches tall so I don't need you know 2,500 to 3,000 ecotech or AI gear in order for this tank to be lit and you can see that everything is you know is really colorful yeah, I just really love what these lights are doing. That's my new jaw dropper from, uh, was it RRC? I got it from Tim Herman, who's been around forever, but has just the killer corals. But you can see like that PC rainbow, you know, that's out towards the outer limits of the par range, which incidentally, I don't know the par, I don't really care. It's all about slowly acclimating these corals to the light, which I've done over time to get those percentages I was just talking about. And I'm still, you know, ramping. And it's, it's you know, it, it's gonna take time, but I don't really think I need a par meter in order to be successful. You know, just try to use good observation and you know, just try to use some of them skills over the years that we develop through keeping these amazing corals. All right, y'all.